Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Come on, give him the glory and give him the honor. Because he has risen and the grave is empty. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. I'm excited to be in the house of God this morning. Who's ready for the growth track? Next step. Amen. Yes, I see God is busy filling up the church again. After a massive church split. God cannot disappoint His people, Donald. It is impossible. Because we are not busy with our own kingdom. We are busy with the kingdom of God. Amen. Say with me, authority and power. A lot of people want the power, but they don't know how the authority works. Authority comes with responsibility, you on. You know, God can give you a million rand, and if you are careless, and you don't, you don't take authority over your own decisions, what happens? Who have heard about people that has won the lotto? And then within a year, all the money is gone, because money rules them, and they don't rule money. Which means money had authority and power over them, over their decisions. Alright, do you guys get what I'm saying this morning? So tell somebody next to you, it's time. I will take my rightful place. Say money will locate me. You know people are afraid when you are a Christian, you say money mustn't locate me. I will preach prosperity in this church because God's people must prosper. Do you believe that? Now first of all, you need to believe what you say. A lot of people say it, but they don't believe it. Tell somebody next to you, I will become rich. Say, I will break the power by the authority that God has given me. Satan, I will no longer be poor. Do you know one of the most, most strongest weapon the devil use against Christianity is poverty. Because how can you say your God is so good and your God is so loving and kind, but you are poor? Now tell yourself, I will be the one that will become the next millionaire in my family. That I will help my family. That I will break the curse of poverty. Now you need to believe that. Amen. Believe what you are about to release in the spiritual realm. Believe that the Lord your God is able and ready and all powerful to change your destiny. Say, Lord, I want to be filled with the fire. What fire? The consuming fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Do you know when you speak in tongues, it's like fire on your tongue. Now, I heard that one man said that, listen, uh, this church is too much. I can listen to the preaching, but when they start to pray, it's too much. You see, when I start to pray, the demon inside him will start to manifest. Because he has no authority over his body. You see, it doesn't mean when you speak in tongues that you're only spiritual fault. When you speak in tongues, it means that you surrender to authority that is higher than your authority. When you start to speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit intervenes for you in a kingdom that is above this kingdom. There is an authority and a power that is higher than the president of this nation. There is a kingdom that rules above the kingdoms of this world. And that is the kingdom of God. And tell somebody next to you, I'm part of that kingdom. Say I'm a citizen in that kingdom. Okay. We're going to get excited now. That's fine. Don't worry. And if I see you sleep in this church, it's small enough that I can see it. So, don't worry. <laughs> mm. I said to the Lord, Lord. Let us become a church that never lose a hunger for your presence. I'd rather sit with five people and dwell in his presence than sit with thousands and Jesus is not there. Even those watching online, I pray that you will encounter God. That you will encounter the living God. Amen. Uh, do you, are you guys called? Can we switch off the aircon? Because I see some people. It's like, you need the fire of the Holy Ghost. I remember. <laughs> For years I've preached in a church. In the Afrikaans church. In a very poor community. 
And um, Charlene, you, you, your company sponsored Aircons, right? Was it right? Yeah, your company sponsored, and I think Leon's organization also sponsored. But before that, you believe me, without Aircons, it was hot. But then God said, I give you authority and power to speak things that does not exist into existence. And every time I stepped onto that platform, I said, the Lord is going to bless us with air cons. And then God is my witness. Then all of a sudden, we got two air cons. Say authority and power. You see, the thing is, you can rather sit and complain and never change. Or you can start to take authority and power and start to speak things into existence. How is your future looking like? Some will say, oh. You know, Uncle Alvin, you know some of these white people, you know how they are. In Africa, it's, But the Bible says we have authority and power. The Bible says that the wealth of the wickedness will come to the righteousness. We know our government is not good. They are doing things not the right way. Amen? Come on. But if you are a child of God, you can know what to do, how to do it, if you understand your authority and your power. Authority with power. Did you know religious people do not fear the Lord? Religious people don't fear the Lord. Do you know why? Religious people are not just blinded and deceived by simply made up by their own doctrine. Let me, let me use a practical example. If people stand in front here and they are full of religion and they don't fear the Lord, it simply means they don't fear the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. But a person that is filled with demons, when that person stands here, there will be a manifestation of that demon. Without me saying anything, what does it mean? That there is an authority and a power that is within me that they can see. But the religious people filled with their own doctrine cannot fear God because they don't fear authority and power. Their doctrine has overpowered the doctrine of the Bible. Spirit of religion, let me explain this. People that knows how to cast out demons can tell you that one type of demon that is very difficult to cast out, it's a spiritual, religious demon. Because they don't fear God. So when I walk past people that is, that is filled with a demon, what you will experience is that without even releasing a word, they see in the spiritual realm and they start, the Bible says they know it. And they tremble. But religious people will tell you in your face, the Spirit of God is not in this church. Do you guys get what I say? To go and speak against anything that is supernatural comes from people that doesn't understand there is authority and power. Do you know what? I want to say publicly right here, right now, every person that has left this church, my prayer for them is that God shall use them mightily. Because we are working against Satan, not against each other. But the problem is, church, person that's full of religion with their own messed up doctrine, they are stubborn and will deny authority and power of the Holy Ghost. And in most cases, they will also deny grace and love for others you see demons know what you have is inside of you is of God and the authority is above their authority we have received power from God and the question is to do what Michael this platform has not been given to me to intimidate dominate manipulate and we'll get into that tonight because tonight I'm going to preach about is there witchcraft within my family you see this platform has not been given to humanity to preach the gospel manipulating dominating discriminating you guys get what i'm saying 
we have received an authority and a power and the question is what are we supposed to do that because without understanding if God gives you the Holy Spirit and there's power attached to that the Bible says in Acts that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you shall receive power the Greek word is dunamis to do miraculous things but there's a lot of people that receives the Holy Spirit but they don't understand the authority so let's understand firstly what are we supposed to do when the Lord gives us the power can we get to that because there's an authority and there's power let's understand the power put on Luke chapter number 4 verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to who the poor but then people that is rich will say but what about me some people are poor in the spirit he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and set liberty to those who are oppressed. Say oppressed. Man, which of Afrikaners is oppressed in this land? And depressed. So it does not matter In what profession you are, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, a manager, it doesn't matter. You have been called to heal the sick, set the captives free, cast out devils, and raise the dead. Doesn't matter who you are. Some of you might be a cleaner. Some of you might be a retired elderly person. Melvin, there are still people around you that you must pray for. Because there's a power that is invested into you. And the question is, can you understand, it doesn't matter what age you are, do you know that there is a power within you that God says that you can dominate this world, that you can rule, that you can multiply, you can subdue. And the devil has lied to Christianity. And it's only when you wear a suit you can do that. That's religion. Come on. I just want to mention this. Do you know that it is not just for pastors to do funerals? But religion has made us believe that a pastor must do the funeral. Come on. Nowhere in the Bible stands that. But that responsibility has been given to them because we are portraying pastors as the only ones that can do things. Listen to me. I have casted out demons in a shorts and pluckies. You don't have to be dressed to impress. You have to be filled. You have to have the power. You have to have the authority at any given point in time to speak and release the power of God. So the problem is a lot of people don't understand the authority. The authority does not lie within the holy oil. Some people will come to me and say, Pastor, can I just get some of this oil? You don't need oil to cast out demons. You don't need holy water to cast out demons. All you need is the authority that comes with the power. Church, do you know what is the most biggest thing that kills authority? It's familiarity. When you get familiar with the presence of God. Imagine you said... You know, you're, some people are not in identity. You know, it happens in other churches. Let me use this as an example. Michael, come stand here. I want to use this as an example. Michael, you are spiritually filled, so you're not going to take offense. Ne? Okay. Say, don't take offense. So watch what happens. The pastor comes in the church, and he walks past Michael, and he just looks at him, and he just passes by. He doesn't greet him. How would it make you feel? You see that face? What did I do wrong? Imagine God steps into this building right here, right now, and you are not sensitive to His presence. 
You are not aware that he has entered. You are not aware that the anointing is moving. You are not aware that his glory is tangible. You are not aware that his robe is filling this temple. You are not aware that he's busy touching people. And yet you are sitting there and God looks at you and he says, My son, my daughter, I want to I wanna touch you. I want to have an intimacy with you. I want to have a relationship with you. But you are so familiar with his presence. And you don't know it. Thank God that God is not human and will take offense like Michael, you know. It's like, <laughs> come on, just give him a hand that he's helping out. One of the biggest things that kills authority, all of us has the power. Let me explain this to you, church. When the devil was kicked out of heaven, God did not remove the power that he carries. That's why he's still the ruler of this world. But what God has done is took away his authority. Okay, let me explain this. He has the power to tempt you. But you have the authority to overpower him. The devil has the power to take things away from you. But you have the authority... You have the Holy Spirit, you have the Word of God, you have heaven to respond, you have angels to respond, and all you have to do is understand, the devil can tempt you, but he cannot kill you. Mm, I hope that somebody's life is about to change. I pray that this church will become hungry for His presence. That this church will simply cannot sit here and not respond to His anointing. There's people that come sometimes in this church and then they see people jump up and down and get excited. And then they look at Sydney because Sydney, I small for you. I'm not a normal preacher, church. Don't expect a normal person. I am not. And I will never change. I am who I am. Come on. The reality is we cannot be people's pleasers. Tell somebody next to you, I'm going to get out of my box. And I'm going to enjoy the presence of God. Say with me, authority and power. We have the authority and the power to set people free. And we cannot encounter the king of kings of the heavens and the earth and not be set free. I had this discussion with a young man yesterday in my office and I said to him this. I said to him, listen. If you have encountered God and you really love him, how is it possible that you keep on going and doing the wrong things? then I have to question the fact that did you really encounter God? You know, I was a drug addict. I was drinking every day of my life. I was a full-blown out addict. I was on crystal meth. People don't know it. But I was on crystal meth. These youngsters, are, they are having an issue and they can't get being set free. You see, but the day that I made a decision and said, Lord, I know that there is something that you want me to do for you. And I cannot in any way exchange it for what I am busy experiencing now. You see, there was something in my life that the devil wanted to take. And it was my wife and my daughter. But I knew when I was sitting in my car outside of the hospital, and I knew that there was an authority higher than the devil's authority. When I made a covenant with God, I said, Lord, if you save my wife and you save my daughter, from this day, I will pick up my cross and I will follow you. You see, authority and power was activated. I could not do it. Let me explain this. The doctor said, your wife and your daughter are not going to make it both. We will see who's going to make it. You see, that is the authority of a doctor. The devil looks you in the eye and says, I'm going to take your family. And death is knocking on your door. But you see, I could do nothing. The doctors could do nothing, Johan. But there is a kingdom. There is an authority. And when I submitted myself under that authority, the devil lost the battle. So the question is, how are you busy fighting your battles at the moment? Are you fighting it in your own authority and your own power? Or can you submit under an authority and a power that is higher than the kingdom of darkness? 
Come on, church. There's an authority and a power of a kingdom that is above this kingdom. The Bible says that the kingdom of darkness shall not overwhelm the kingdom of light. For those watching online now, just come on the authority and power. Because you need God to enter into your life. I don't know who is in this church watching online needs a heavenly intervention. You know, my wife got upset with me the one day after the church split took place. And um, I had like an attitude, John. It's like, it's like, I said, Lord, if you want to close this church, do it. My wife got upset with me. She says, what about the people that's there? I said to her, Angel, what you need to understand is, the people that is here has not been given to me. It's not my sheep. It is God's sheep. And I'm not saying it arrogantly onto the Lord. But Lord, if you want to close the church, if I'm, not, if I'm not living out my purpose and my calling, close the church. Send me in the direction you want me to do. Because I am done playing church. I am done trying to play Christian. I want to be a Holy Spirit filled, Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, Holy Spirit fire. I want to speak the God that I serve with signs, wonders, and miracles. I don't want to step into this building and put up a show. I want to be a person that people look at me and say, but surely Jesus is inside of him. Surely the hand of God is upon his life. After almost every family that has stayed behind has been contacted. Trying to close this church. Spreading lies. Church, I want to say to you, this is the house of God. It is not Sydney's house. There is an authority and a power that speaks here that is beyond my authority and power. You need to sit here and you need to say it out loud. There is an authority and a power and there is, listen to me, when you understand authority and power, directly connected to authority and power, it is deliverance and miracles. Power brings miracles. You cannot be saved and delivered without authority. I'm going to say it again that you understand this church. Authority brings deliverance and healing. Power brings signs and miracles. Now you need to ask yourself, is in this church, is there an authority and a power that speaks on our behalf? You are sitting here and, you're, and you need to know this. You know what is a beautiful thing that I have um, seen is, who knows Moses in the Bible? Some of us know that he's the guy that led the people out of captivity and out of slavery. And some of you know that he's the one that, that brought the Ten Commandments. But some of you need to hear this. Put on Exodus chapter number 33, verse 12 to 13. I want to read this to you. You know what is the mu most beautiful thing about this scripture is? Moses didn't go to God and ask him what he has he wants. Some of us only come to church and say, Lord, you know, Lord, you have heavenly riches. So I want wealth. Lord, you, you have miracles and blessings and I want your miracles and I want your blessings in my life. There's nothing wrong with it. But watch what Moses does when he encountered the Lord face to face. At the gate of a tabernacle, which Moses called the place of gathering. Listen to this. The promise the Bible speaks about here is the promise of God's presence. Then Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me bring up this people but you have not let me to know whom you will send with me authority and power comes by knowing what you need to do with the authority with that authority you need to know who are you going to do it with come on jesus have given us the example he didn't come to this earth and was a one-man business show what did he do he grouped he recruited, he equipped, and he imparted, and then he said to the 12 disciples, now you go out. You get what I'm saying? So Moses says, listen, you have said, let me bring up this people, 
But you have not yet let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. The next verse. Now therefore I pray. I have found, gra uh, found grace in your sight. Show me now your way. Show me now your way. He didn't ask God for food, gold, silver, camels, donkeys, farkies, I don't know, whatever he wanted to ask. Calvin, he didn't ask for money. He knew that he was finding himself in the presence of God. But it went further and beyond just finding himself in the presence of God. He wanted to find out, Lord, and he said, listen, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Moses said, listen, Lord, let our people become your people. You see, there's an authority given to me. If I say to you guys, just stand up quickly, please just stand up, stand up. Watch what happens now. This is what we call authority. It's not power. I'm not forcing you to stand up. I'm simply commanding by the authority that I have. This mic is very anointed. Because if I speak in this mic, you listen. <laughs> this mic has more power than me. Because if I walk past you and I don't speak in the mic, you will not hear me. But when I speak into the mic, I say, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. You will do it. Why? Because there's authority. Just have your seat. Watch how beautiful it is. <laughs> this is powerful. I'm telling you. So in other nations, this anointed mics of selling for 100,000, you know, 100,000. A very anointed mic. <laughs> no, it doesn't come with the anointing oil. It doesn't come with the nice suit and the nice blue shoes and whatever. It comes with authority that we have. So what did Moses do? He went to God and he said, Lord, show me your way. You see, just by breathing and coming into the presence of God is already grace. So Moses knew, I am standing here. And I have found grace in your eyes, but I further pray more that I will find more grace in your eyes. Just to be saved and receive the, the, the crown of eternal life is already grace. So some of you will go through life and you are a Christian and you will see heaven. But you would have never experienced authority and power that lies within you. Which means you never identify what's your purpose and what is your destiny. You never come to a place and understand, listen, it is not just about coming to church. It is about being filled, receive authority, receive the Holy Spirit. Now you are equipped and imparted with the Word of God to go out and change your community and change your nation. You have not been called just to come and sit in church. That's why I can't wait for the growth track to finish. So that we can go out and make a difference. We're going to hit the streets again. Mm. Who saw my testimony of that one lady that sent me a message saying, listen, you know, you come to school and you pray. We need to go back and revisit schools. We need to make a change out there. You know, in the, in the circles that I find myself in, I shared it with some people. On Thursday, I had the privilege to pay for our Deputy Minister of Social Development. We are a very small church, but the influence stretches further and beyond these walls. There are pastors out there that are rich. They have got big buildings. And they have authority and power. But I have found grace in the eyes of God. To have an apostolic voice into this nation speaking into government. You see, when you have authority and power, it takes you further and beyond where money can take you. You see, authority and power can take you into the corridors where money cannot take you. It doesn't mean that money is not needed. Listen, money is needed. 
I need diesel to put in my car to go to these meetings. Do you guys get what I'm saying? I must say the government food is not bad. I must give them credit. Um, yeah, no, you don't get runaways and sukkel koppe and good. You get proper food. It's, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but church, the reality is, is, do you understand your authority and your power? Your position, listen to me, doesn't necessarily always come with authority. Your position comes with power, but you need to understand authority. You see, Moses was called in a position to lead the people of God out of slavery. But yet he lacked authority. How do I know it? It's why he went back to God and cried to the Lord and said, Lord, this is happening and this is too much for me. What must I do? He lacked authority. Do you guys understand what I say? So God said to him, the authority I've given you, that the spirit that rests upon you, call other people, 70, and then I will take what is off on you, the spirit that is on you, I will put on them so that they can share what? Authority. Oh, I don't know if you get what I say. In this church, you can be anointed and the same spirit that is upon me can come upon you. The same authority that I have can come upon you. That is what we call importation. Importation can take place. And we can go deeper like borrowed anointing and borrowed grace and where you become a partaker of the grace and we can carry on with so many things. But for this message this morning, say with me authority and power. So when Moses didn't ask Lord for anything else, but Lord, show me your way. It simply said to me that the body of Christ must understand the authority it has in this nation. Do you know how sad it is that normally the body of Christ within this nation waits until they are on their knees before they respond? Do you know what takes away authority? Familiarity and comfort. Unfortunately, churches have become relaxed. And not all churches. There are, there are churches that move in the power. Say authority. Say a power. He wanted to understand God's authority and power and not his own. That's why he said, Lord, show me your way. A lot of people run, Johan, I've had this discussion many times with you. I say to you, you know how to run your business. But there's an authority and a power that is above your authority. Imagine you ask God, listen, this year I have made so much money through the authority and the power and the skill that I have. But the next year I want to put you to task. I want to test you in this. Show me the way that you want me to do it. Then everything around you changes. You see, in my first year of ministry, I remember it. I was still driving a minibus. I was playing taxi. You remember, Donald, you remember I was playing taxi? I used to drive people to church. I loved to do it because I wanted people to enter into heaven. I wanted people, I wanted souls to be saved. And it's still my, my passion. But listen to this. In those days, God gave me an opportunity and the church was birthed and we went on. But there was a time in my life where, where I was building the church and not God. It went to such an extent, Uncle Alvin, that when I was driving on my way, I was on my way to a board meeting of the church, Johan. And I had plans because I am the pastor and I have authority and I have power. But unfortunately, it was my might and my power and not the Holy Spirit. So as I went to church, Darren, you remember there? So Shanae, as I went, the Holy Spirit entered into the bus. And the Lord asked me clearly, are you happy with your church? Johan, listen. God doesn't intimidate you. He's just a just God and he's a righteous God and believe me he is a very jealous God so I was so full of myself 
I didn't even notice at that point in time, Elise, that he said, are you happy with your church, Sydney? Because it wasn't my church, it was his church. He gave it to me. But the problem is I found myself with authority and power that I wanted to rule the church, that I wanted to rule the church. Because I was surrounded by a lot of religious people. They told me that uh, uh, Jesus' culture is devil's worship. That's where I came from. Heal song is of the devil. And all these nice songs that we sing today in this church is of the devil. But coming back to the story, so God asked me the question. He says, are you happy with your church? Arrogantly, I say to God, yes, Lord, we are running five days a week. And then, you know, Saturdays we are doing courses. And Sunday we are having in the morning service. And, and the church is full of people. And then the presence of God lifted. So I came into the meeting. And everybody just welcomed me and they had cake. And you know, you, you know the board meetings. That's why I had a big stomach at one point. I'm still big. I'm working on it, but I'm trying my best. But guess what happens? As I sat down, the Lord asked me the question again. Are you happy with your church? And he answered me and he said, I am not. So what do I do? Blame shifting. No, they say, Niamh, but this is what I could do. It's like, I said, now I know I'm in trouble. So I asked the board members. I said, God wants to know. Are you guys happy with this church? <laughs> yeah, here they are. Blame shifting. You see, Lord, they have the authority. They are the... The church board. I must listen to them. So if they are happy, then I must be happy, and then you must be happy. You know, it's like <laughs> fast thinker, Papa. But you know what happens? So the one lady says, "Yes, Pastor, oh the years and the black, oh the years and the black." And the kerk groei and the church is busy growing and everything is fine and possible. You know, look how the church is full. The one said, look how this, while she was still speaking, the Holy Spirit prompted me so much. And I said, I slept on the table like that. And I said, but God said he's not happy. I almost thought some demons are going to manifest. But all of a sudden, everybody looks at me and Quiet. Die pastoor is vol te moene. Wat gaan nou met hom aan? There has to be demons in <laughs> You see, but there's an authority above our authority as a church board. And at that point in time when I said to him, God is not happy. You see, the thing is, is that I had to go back to God and I said, Lord, but why are you saying you're not happy with this church? And from that point in time, the Holy Spirit started to guide me. And He started to teach me. And He started to impart to me. And when I had been trained and prepped, at the moment when I was ready, so we went through a big transformation. Three worship bands stepped out. Two board church, I, I'm talking about two complete board members. Church members that became board members. But I end up with only two people, just the treasure and myself. Because when God speaks, I listen to Him. There's an authority that speaks higher than a board church. A church board or whatever you want to call it. We cannot submit under a human authority. There's an authority and a power that speaks beyond that. And at that point in time, Shanae, you know what happened. You were, you were with me. All the way. We went through this transformation. And in 2019, God said, I will now make you an apostolic voice into this nation and even into government. Break away. Close the Afrikaans church. Open up an English church. Identity church was birthed in my house during COVID. 
So the reality is, is that if you ask God, what must I do? He will guide you. But if you are familiar with your own choices and you don't, and you are comfortable with only following your own mind, your own ways, your own authority and your own power, you take away the opportunity for God to move supernaturally in your life. When you act in the natural, the supernatural will not be in it. The Bible says, think of the things above and not below. Why? Because you are the head and not below. But the reality is we keep on thinking on this level. Authority and power is directly connected to what? Miracles and deliverance. Now, if we look at this, Jesus walked, and I want to end off with this. Jesus walked on the earth with this. He had authority and he had power. So through authority, he healed people. And through power, Jesus did his miracles. It came to such a point where the the people looked at Jesus and they said, what is this word that he speaks of with such an authority? Put on Luke chapter number 4 verse 36. Listen to this. Then they were all and spoke among themselves saying, what a word is this? The, uh, what a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. So there is an authority and a power that he spoke about that it was above the nature says, behold, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. There is a kingdom that is above this kingdom, church. They mock Jesus' ministry with authority and power. People know that Identity Church moves with authority and power. Within the last month, we had deliverance here. We had healings taking place. We had demons cast out. We had baptisms. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. The devil is a liar because there's an authority and a power that speaks in this church. 